Hello guys, my name is Eric, and my senior project is called Shooting Method for Optimal Control Systems. My project advisor is Dr. Koshkin, and my committee is Dr. Takaro and Dr. Chan. Optimal Control Theory is a branch of applied mathematics that has many applications, such as minimizing things like cost, drag force, unemployment, or maximizing things like profits and revenue. It just depends on what we are trying to maximize or minimize. These problems lead to systems or equations where we can use Pontragon is maximum principle. To reduce optimal control theory problems to something more known like two-point boundary value problems. The purpose of this project is to study different methods of solving different boundary value problems. So there's actually a method called Pontragon is maximum principle, which we stated earlier. This principle allows us to transform optimal control problems to solve to something called two-point boundary value problems. Two-point boundary value problems are problems where you have two sets of variables. For one of those sets of variables, you will have an initial condition, and for the other, you will have a terminal condition. In our case, for our two-point boundary pro value problem shown here, our initial condition is A and our terminal condition is B. So how do we solve these two-point boundary value problems? Well, we actually have well-established methods to solve initial value problems. For this project, we will be using the method that converts solving two-point boundary value problems into an initial value problem by this procedure that is analogous to shooting a target and adjusting the angle of shooting. This procedure is called the shooting method. To perform the shooting method, our first step will be converting our boundary value problem into an equivalent initial value problem. We convert it by replacing the terminal condition by an initial condition. But why do we even convert it? Well, the answer is simple, because there are many standard ways of solving initial value problems, making solving boundary value problems simpler. You can see the difference between the system and the one in the previous slide is that now we have two initial conditions instead of one initial condition and one terminal. But there is actually a drawback when converting a two-point boundary value problem into an initial value problem, which is one of our conditions will become unknown. This means we will have to guess the missing condition to satisfy the terminal condition. Uh, so roughly speaking, we are aiming at a target and shooting out different trajectories trying to hit it. So let's take this picture into consideration. We can let the angle of inclination of this cannon be the initial condition. These trajectories are actually our guesses. So for example, this first trajectory is our first guess, and we actually overshot. This next guess, we undershot. The terminal condition we want to satisfy here is actually our target. So we are looking for the solution of this trajectory since this is the target we want to hit. So basically, we're replacing the terminal condition for lambda by the initial condition and solving the system to see if the terminal condition is matched. This is why it's called the shooting method, since more than likely we will not hit our target on the first try, then we will have to adjust our guess and keep shooting. Like the picture, on our first guess, we overshot, and in our second guess, we, we undershot. So we will have to keep adjusting our guess to try and satisfy the terminal condition. We can organize this process by taking the difference between our target and where our trajectory ends up as the function. Let lambda of t denote the solution of the initial value problem at time t. This lets us define the shooting function in order to satisfy the terminal condition. Since this, fun since it since this function will be zero, this suggests that the shooting method is kind of a method where we are finding a root of a function. This gives us the difference between the terminal value of lambda and the target, which is b. But if we refer into our picture, then our terminal will be the, the, the bullseye. Since adjusting our guess multiple times will not be very efficient, and we will probably never guess the correct solution to the terminal value, then we will need an ODE solver to solve our initial value problems faster. But an ODE solver alone still won't be enough, since we will still be guessing randomly. So what do we need? We need a root finding algorithm that will take our initial solution of the ODE solver and use it to approach the correct guess. In this case, it will just be the solution that satisfies the terminal condition. So this ODE solver will just be solving for the root of the function, since the terminal value will be zero. So what is a root finding algorithm? A root finding algorithm is what it states. It finds roots of a function using a specific algorithm. There is a variety of root finding algorithms, of which we will use Newton's secant and Bernoulli's method for this project. We will now go over these three root finding algorithms to see how their algorithms find roots. In Newton's method, Newton's method uses tangent lines to approximate the function. 
First, we will need an initial guess where we can find the slope of the tangent line. In this case, it will be here, our first guess. And this will be the slope of the first uh, tangent line. Then, we will find the intersection of this tangent line with the x-axis, which will be right here. And this will be actually the next guess. Then, we will simply just repeat the process to get our next guesses, and eventually approach the root of the function. As you can see in a good situation like on this picture, the process quickly converges to its root. So we start here, our initial guess, get the slope of the tangent line, it approaches our next guess, and then again we get the slope of the tangent line, we get our third guess, again we get the slope of the tangent line, and as you can see the next one will probably be really really close to the actual root root. So the algorithm is pretty simple. It just requires derivative of the function, evaluation of the function, and add its derivative. And this will be the updating formula for our next guess using Newton's method. Now let's consider secant method. Secant method uses a succession of secant lines to approach this function. Uh, it can be thought of as a finite difference approximation of Newton's method. So as we can see from this picture, secant method relies on two initial approximations x sub 0 and x sub 1. After that, we evaluate the function at f of x sub 0 and f of x sub 1 to draw a secant line. The secant line will produce our next uh, guess, which will be x sub 2. We can then find the evaluation of f of x sub 2 and draw another secant line between f of x sub 2 and f of x sub 1 and produce our third guess. Again, we will just repeat this process until we, we approach the real root, which will be right here. So secant method does not require you to bracket in the real root by the two initial guesses, but it is always a good idea to have initial guesses relatively close to the real root. So this method, this is the updating formula for our next guess using secant method. Broyden's method will be our third and final algorithm we will be considering for this project. So first of all, why do we even need an algorithm that looks more complicated when we have simpler root finding algorithms? What makes Broden method special? Broden's method is special because it generalizes to multidimensional problems, which is what we will be needing for our applications of two-point boundary value problems to solve optimal control problems. Now, even though this picture on the, on the right is specific to Broden's uh, in one dimension, the process is, is the same for Broden's method in multidimension. Unlike Newton's and secant, which are specific to one dimension. So everything you see in this picture is general to Broden's method and multidimensional. So Broden's method is an algorithm that generalizes the multidimensional case, but if we consider the one dimension case, it is a combination of Newton's and secant method, basically a hybrid. Broden, Broden's method requires an initial guess and an initial value of the Jacobian. So what is a Jacobian? The Jacobian is just a multidimensional generalization of derivative, and it is a matrix. If we think about this, Bernard's method is just a generalization of Newton's method where the derivative is replaced by the Jacobian. Notice how this Bernard's method algorithm looks very uh, similar to Newton's, Newton's method algorithm. So the value of the Jacobian would just be, be getting updated throughout each iteration. Here is where Newton's version for nonlinear equations and Bernard's are different. Newton's method for nonlinear equations needs to compute Jacobian and inverse of the Jacobian at each iteration. Broyden's does not, however. It only computes Jacobian once at the beginning of the algorithm to get the initial value of the Jacobian, and then once it's computed, Broyden's method uses an approximation formula to the inverse of Jacobian. This, this approximation formula will then update the inverse of the Jacobian directly at each iteration. So basically, instead of computing Jacobian analytically, it updates it. The formula that updates the Jacobian is complicated, so it is convenient to use these abbreviations. We can see these abbreviations being used here, and we can see what they do. By using this picture, we can derive the two possible ways to update Jacobian, which are good Broyden's and bad Broyden's. Using this approximation formula is actually beneficial since it reduces the amount of calculations at each iteration without significantly degrading the speed of convergence. So actually, there is three methods to approximate to, to use Broyden's method. 
The first way would be good burdens. The second way would be bad burdens. And the third way is actually an approximation to Jacobian. But it is not really considered. So why is it not considered? Because we will still need to find the inverse of the approximation of Jacobian afterwards, which defies the whole point of saving calculations at each iteration. The reason bad burdens method is called bad is because it tends to have less initial points where it actually converges. However, bad burdens method tends to converge faster than good burdens at the initial points that do converge. So while good burdens tends to be slower, it is more reliable when converging. This is how it gets its name good burdens method. So now finally, we're going to apply these root finding methods to implement the shooting method for the two point boundary value problems. So let's apply a combination of Newton's seeking method to the shooting function. First, we will have to modify the Newton's method algorithm by approximating the derivative using the finite difference. We can see it here. The reason we are doing this is because we have no way of computing the derivative analytically. So we will need to produce our solutions from an ODE solver using our first guess lambda of 0 and lambda of 0 plus h. Then we can proceed using the newton seeking method algorithm. The reason it's called newton seeking shooting is because since we are using finite difference for the derivative, they basically, they basically become indistinguishable. If we proceed in the Newton's method direction, then it makes sense to choose h small to approximate the derivative. But if we take the seeking method direction, then we are not restricted to choose h small. We can have two guesses that are wide apart even though the procedures are the same in both cases. The choice of h small or h big is the only trait that remains of the Newton's and Seekin method. So algebraically, the algorithm is the same. Let's take a closer look at this picture. For this simulation, we will take the Newton's method direction. We will use the following nonlinear system of equations, and we are using the shooting method to solve it. With our, first, with our initial guess being negative one, h being really small, and t b in 10. We can see that we shoot from negative 1. Our first shot trajectory is actually really far from our target at 0. We can see how at each iteration the trajectories are getting closer and closer to our goal or to our target and eventually they converge. For this next simulation we would take the second method direction. This means we have no restriction on h. Here, we will be using the following nonlinear system of equations, which with our initial guesses being negative 1.9 and h, technically our second guess, will be 3.8, and t will equal to 10. So as you can see from our graph, we shot from negative 1.9 and at 1.9. So why is it 1.9 if we chose 3.8 as h? Remember, we will be using the finite difference approximation, which adds lambda of 0 plus h. This time, the, tra the trajectory of our shots was closer than the last example. Now even though we had two initial guesses, it still converged to zero. We can see that at each iteration how it's getting closer and closer to our target of zero. Now let us consider the Brodin shooting method. Recall that the Brodin's method relies on an initial approximation and the initial value of Jacobian. In order to find this initial Jacobian, we need some method which, which does not just approximate derivative by the finite difference. This is what the variational system is supposed to accomplish. So first, let's consider the one-dimensional case of Broyden's method. Since Broyden's relies on the initial value of Jacobian, and since we are not able to take the derivative analytically of the boundary value problem, we will have to build this extended system called the variational system to get our initial Jacobian value. We start by adding variational of y to y and variational of lambda to lambda where variational of y and variation of lambda are small quantities. Here, variation of y of 0 will equal 0, because we are not varying y, variable y since the initial value is fixed, but we are varying the value lambda because that is the variable with respect to which we are shooting. Since the shooting function transforms delta of 0 into delta of t, the derivative is the limit of the quotient variation of lambda of t divided by the variation of lambda of 0. So now our system doubles, and we are and we have equations for y and lambda, and in addition to this, we will have equations for variational y and variational lambda, which will have partial derivatives of f and g in the equations. So increasing variational of the initial point by some factor would scale variational at the terminal point proportionally. So we will have variational of the initial point to equal 1 
so that the variation on the terminal will give us a Jacobian. In this case, it will be the derivative of the shooting function, which is just a number since we are just considering the one dimensional case. Once we have our initial Jacobian value, we may then proceed by using the Broden's method. For this Broden's shooting simulation, we will use the following nonlinear system of equations. Here, we are shooting with the initial guess of 9 at time 10. From the graph, we can see our first initial, initial guess uh, trajectory, which is 9. And then the updating formula gives us the next guess and eventually get closer and closer to our target of 0. So what about Broden's method in multidimension? How would it work? Well, we would have to use this variational system again to produce our initial Jacobian value. Solving and deriving the variational system will be pretty much the same as, one as the one-dimensional case. The only difference will be that we will have to solve several of these systems. These systems will make our variational lambda be a basis vector instead of just one. After solving the system n times, we will get n columns with the Jacobian, and this will be our Jacobian initial value. At the beginning of my senior project, we were able to review the algorithms that we will be using throughout this project. So we compared Nunes method and Seekin method and found its disadvantages and advantages for each one. Afterwards, I was able to go over Broden's method and compare the different methods to approximating the inverse of the Jacobian, which is just the good Broden's method versus the bad Broden's method. Something interesting about this is that according to James Sutherland, bad Broden's didn't converge for half the points that good Broden's did converge for. But for our examples, back Broden's was always converging and was converging faster than good Broden's. That's something that I would like to go over more to experiment with the convergence of back Broden's method. Some challenges that I faced during this senior project were programming. At the beginning, I had to switch ODE solvers since the one I was using was not solving nonlinear equations. So I switched to ODE45 on MATLAB. The biggest challenge, however, was coding Broden's in one dimension. I was having trouble calling in the ODE solver in the loop, and my program was only outputting the first initial guess. So as for future work, uh, I will be programming Broden's method in the multidimensional case, which is actually which is currently work in progress. Some other work that I would like to do is solving optimal control problems. So in this project, we directly started with two-point boundary value problems. However, the point of the solving these problems is to solve optimal control problems that I talked about at the beginning of this presentation. So the goal of this work is to integrate the shooting method for two-point boundary value problems using Pentragon's maximum principle to convert optimal control problems into two-point boundary value problems. Then the user could just enter parameters of the optimal control problems and the program would then convert it to a two-point boundary value problem and use Broden's method or some other method to solve that problem and not put that optimal solution. In optimal control problems, often the right-hand side, which are the functions f and g, are not differentiable, they are discontinuous. So there's actually a way of extending shooting method to the case of discontinuous functions, but it, become, it becomes much more sub, sub, subtle. So I would like to be able to solve these two-point manager value problems where the functions aren't smooth. So these are my references that I used for this project. And lastly, I would like to thank Dr. Koshkin for being my senior project advisor and guiding me throughout my senior project. I would also like to extend his gratitude to Dr. Chan and Dr. Takaro for agreeing to be part of my committee. And lastly, I would like to thank the University of Houston downtown and its Department of Mathematics and Statistics for always being a source of motivation. Thank you. This will conclude my senior project presentation. Thank you for watching.